basically, it's about this sort of boy, he's not even got a name, and this dog, who's also not got a name. And um, it's, it's basically, it's chaos theory for kids. Um, I was sort of inspired by cartoons. I love cartoons. And, um, you know, what a fine art form it is. And I wanted to sort of draw sort of a static cartoon, if you like. And so I had certain sort of actual sort of technical challenges, like how will I make it flow from left to right throughout the book? And uh, basically it's all gravity fed. And uh, these are the sorts of things that I have to consider that, that I don't think the readers really, um, you know, they, they don't notice, which is obviously what I want. I don't want them to actually notice these things. But it all goes downhill. So basically, I can show you, um, it's a book, uh, it's a story without words, except for a few um, sound, you know, onomatopoeias, um, uh, to, to, uh, which are often written to describe motion as well. So here we are, here's the boy, and there's his red ball that's stuck in the gutter from a, a, an earlier accident. And he slams the door, and uh, the ball comes out of the uh, gutter, lands on the cat, which then jumps on the lake, parts from the shopping, it spills on the man, he lets go of his flat dog on the skateboard, rolls down the hill, uh, and narrowly avoiding the fish van, which skids, and the back doors ping open, all the fish go flying down which hit this chap further down the road, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This took me hours and hours to figure out. But I absolutely love it. I'm so, I'm so proud of it as a book and so fond of it. And I have had some lovely feedback from teachers because it's, um, it's purely a visual narrative. And if you go back, the idea of the book is that you will notice things and you kind of think, oh, hold on, where did that come from? And then you go back and you try and find the start of each one of these little narrative threads. So there are certain narrative threads that run through the entire length of the book. Obviously, there's the boy and the dog and the red ball and the, the dog and the skateboard that goes through the whole thing. But there are other ones that are quite short. And they have these, their own little stories within the, uh, within the story. So um, as it goes through, um, it does get more and more extreme. And you can't think, in every picture you can see the red ball. And, um, and so, so you sort of think, at this point, you think, well, oh, maybe this will be the end of it. And when I read this to children, or show it to children, I'm sort of like, oh, that's obviously the end of it, end of it. And um, they're always so eager to see what happens next. So you sort of see this dragon, and you think, oh, hold on, where was that dragon? And you go back, and you think, oh, right, there he is. He's hiding under all that sludge, fast asleep in the sewers. So yeah, so, um, so uh, um, this was a, a, a very sort of self-indulgent um, thing I did. Um, which I, I particularly enjoyed, and Templar um, is a, a wonderful publisher who gave me the opportunity to do that. And um, it goes on, and there's circus vans and ice cream vans and all sorts happening in it. But it's a really nice thing for kids who are maybe reluctant readers um, and find it a bit difficult. I think it's, there's a lot of fun here to be had, and there's a lot of uh, exploration of the pictures. And I loved that as a kid. In that um, Sorcerer's Apprentice book I showed you at the beginning, there were lots of big spreads with lots of sort of ghoulish little things in jars and, you know, tapping into my, uh, my particular tastes. And um, uh, so I was, I was particularly happy with this.